Hi, welcome back to I2RCNC. In today's video, we'll be going over the introduction for the basic layout of the UCCNC software for new users. First, I'll be covering the most commonly used buttons that you'll find within the software, and then I'll navigate you through the graphic user interface. So let's get started. Enjoy. Opening the UCCNC application, the first thing that will draw your attention is a flashing yellow and red indicator, which is the reset key. The reset key is located to the bottom right hand side of your screen, and it acts as a safety switch. When the reset key is flashing, as seen here, it means that all signal to your I2R CNC control box is being cut off. To activate the signal to the control box, simply click reset. You should hear a click within the box and the reset key will stop flashing. We recommend a best practice to follow is to keep the reset key active and flashing yellow when you are setting up your workpiece or changing bits. This will prevent any accidental movement of your machine and keep the spindle from turning on. Aside from the reset key, there are other key features that you'll need to know on the right hand side of this section. So starting from the top to bottom, we'll start with the offline mode. The offline mode in yellow, as seen here, once activated, will put you into simulation mode. From here, you won't have any control in the real world when you run your CNC. Below that, you have a green button titled Cycle Start. Cycle Start allows you to start any type of toolpath operation that you've imported into UCCNC. Below that, you have your single line function. The single line allows you to run a single line of G code per pass. Under single line, you'll have feed hold. Feed hold will allow you to pause your work, but will not disengage the spindle. So if you click it, your spindle will still be spinning, but your toolpath will no longer be moving along any of the axes. Under that in red, you'll see cycle stop, and this will stop all toolpath operations while machining. This is what we primarily use when we need to stop and resume work. This section here shows you a real-time 3D viewer of the project you're trying to cut. On the left-hand side of the graphic, you'll notice individual icons that one, starting from the top, allows you to center the screen, the plus and the minus, which allow you to zoom in and zoom out, and also a little crosshair with the green dot. Clicking this will allow you to track exactly the position of your drill bit as it cuts along the toolpath. The green cubes that are listed below will show you different angles of view and by clicking the ISO button it will show you a 3D feature as opposed to a top-down bird's eye view. You can also reload by clicking the reload button here. Just under the graphic you'll see the lines of code that have been generated. To get a bigger picture, you can click over here to the toolpath tab, and this is basically a just blown up version of what I just went over on the left hand side of the section. The run tab can be split into three main sections. Starting from the right side, you have the main controls for starting and stopping machine operation. In the middle section, you have your coordinates displays and offsets, as well as your MDI and history of your machine operations. On the left side, you have your real-time viewer, and under that graphic display, you have the lines of G-code that your machine is currently running. Moving to the middle section, we'll go over, firstly, the coordinates that are displayed here with your X, Y, Z, and A axis if you have a fourth axis attached. With your home all icon on the right side in red, and then you have the ability to individually home each axis with the red crosshairs. To do so, just click on each one. If you want to manually zero each of your axes, for instance the X, the Y, and the Z separately, you can also do so by clicking on one of these blue crosshairs. In order to zero all at the same time, you can click the zero all icon here. And to the left is the machine coordinates display, which will display your current machine coordinates. 
Below here, you'll have your manual override for your feeds and then also your speeds on your, for your spindle. Clicking minus or plus during operation will increase or decrease the rate. Just below here in yellow, you'll see a manual operating function button for clockwise spinning of the spindle. And just below here, you'll see the coolant. To the right, you have your pre-programmed coordinates that you can set up, your G54s through your G59. And then to the right here, you'll have your touch-off probe, automatic touch-off setting, where you would click this in order to zero your Z. If you have your machine zeroed and a pre-planned coordinate set, you can go ahead and click go to zero in red here, and your machine will go to the zero that you have set. Just below here, you have your load file, your edit file, the ability to rewind your file, and also close the file once you're done. Just below here, we have the MDI, which is your manual data entry. You can manually input specific lines of G-code as you wish. The actual line displayed here is the entry method to input a specific line of G-code. Upon doing so, you can hit enter and then run from here and it will allow you to for example, pause your work and also rerun it. We hope this video helped you gain a better understanding for where the main button function layouts for UCCNC are and what they do. Check out part two where we'll show you how to make a project from start to finish while operating the I2R CNC with UCCNC. If you have anything you'd like to see in the future, please let us know in the comments below as well as any questions you may have. Or you can also email us at info at i2rcnc.com. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you'd like to join our community on Facebook and Instagram, the links are below. And if you're interested, please visit us at i2rcnc.com. Thanks again. Until next time.